Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be putting together a Ryzen 5600X powered PC. Now, one of my main focuses with this unit here is emulation, but it doesn't mean that we won't be able to do a lot of great gaming on here. And when it comes to these new 5000 series Ryzen chips, I've been really trying to get my hands on one at retail, and I was finally able to achieve that. I actually picked up the 5600X at retail from Best Buy. As for the GPU, I did have to overpay a bit because we're in a weird place with GPUs right now, but I was lucky enough to find a 1660 on my local Craigslist for $70 over retail. It is used, but I was able to see it running before I picked it up, so that was a big plus. I wanted to make sure that it worked before I overpaid for a GPU. But the main attraction to this build is the Ryzen 5 5600X. Like I mentioned, I've been really trying to get my hands on one to test it out. It's got phenomenal single core and multi core performance, and I believe that these will be perfect for higher end emulation. Like Wii U, Switch, and PS3, and with those extra threads, it really helps out with RPCS3. We have 6 cores, 12 threads, at up to 4.6 GHz, and when it comes to PC gaming, the 5600X can definitely hold its own. And as for the case I'm going to be using, this is the Cooler Master Masterbox NR200. Been really wanting to do a build in this, and I finally got around to doing it. It will support up to a 3-slot GPU, so with this 1660, if I did want to upgrade down the road, I got plenty of room in here. It's relatively small when you compare it to tower cases. We got plenty of airflow, and in my opinion, it's a really good looking case. As for the other parts used in this build, I'll go over them as we're building. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. When it comes to the motherboard, I chose to use the ROG Strix B550i. This is a mini ITX board. We have two M.2 slots on here that support NVMe drives. Speaking of storage, for my operating system, I'm going to be using the Silicon Power 512GB NVMe drive. And I'm also going to be throwing in a 3.5 inch 3TB Western Digital drive to hold all of my games, ROMs, and LaunchBox. Because that's what I'm going to be running on this build here as my emulation front end. So now that I have the SSD installed, it's time to get the CPU in here. Like we saw, I'm using that 5600X. 6 cores, 12 threads, I'm really excited about this chip here. When it comes to RAM, I opted for 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz. This is Team Group T-Force Dark RAM. I'm a big fan of Team Group RAM. I use it in all of my PCs. I've really never had issues in the past, and this can be overclocked to 4000 megahertz, and I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to be doing. To keep the 5600X cool, I went with the ID Cooling SE225 XT. This is a massive dual fan tower cooler and I think it's going to get the job done. We have five heat pipes, and even with a little bit of an overclock on this 5600X, I think this is going to do just fine. I was going to go with water cooling, but this was a lot cheaper, and in the long run, it's going to be more reliable. So now that I have my storage, RAM, CPU, and cooler installed on this mini ITX motherboard, it's time to throw it inside of this NR200 case. So I got my back I.O. shield in here, and in order to get this motherboard in here the first time, I did remove the 80mm fan that comes with the NR200. I'll put it back in later, but I wanted to drop everything in here first. Fits in here nicely. I mean, this case was designed for a mini ITX board. One thing I'm not sure about is the clearance here. It looks like it's going to fit, but I forgot to check that when I was buying all of the parts. I need to put this side panel on and just make sure. Sweet, just snaps right down, and it's not making contact with the side panel, so the 225XT does fit in here nicely. I'm going to go ahead and get all my mounting screws and the motherboard, and then we'll install the power supply. The NR200 was designed for an SFX power supply, and that's what I'm using, but I've seen people 3D print brackets to fit a full-size ATX in here. I've also seen some people just kind of zip tie it in there. But I went with a Seasonic Focus 650 fully modular power supply, so I should be able to get this cable management looking pretty good in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and install this, I'll get my cables run, and then we'll install the GPU, and that's about it. So far, I think it's turning out pretty decently. I was worried about the cable management at first, just seeing how open this case is. But as you can see here, with that modular power supply, everything tucks away pretty nicely. Alright, so now it's time to throw that 1660 in here, and one thing I really love about this case is it does support full-size GPUs up to three slots. So when GPU prices come down, if I want to upgrade this GPU, I don't have to be too picky about what I put in here. I'll plug this 8-pin power into the video card. I got a little more cable management to do, and I also need to add my 2TB Western Digital 3.5-inch drive. 
So now I got to get some software installed and then we're going to jump right into some testing. I got a lot of stuff to cover here. We're going to run some benchmarks. We'll test out some PC games and then we'll move over to some emulation. All right, so we got everything up and running. As you can see, we got that Ryzen 5 5600X, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, and I did overclock this to 4000 megahertz in the BIOS, and the GTX 1660. Only thing that I've really changed here is overclocking that RAM from the BIOS. This is going to be sitting at the stock clocks. So later on down the road, I can overclock it if I want to. But the way it's sitting right now, before we jump into some gaming and emulation, I did want to run a few benchmarks. So first on the list, I just ran PC Mark 10. We came out with a total score of 6,828. Looking pretty decent so far. Next on the list, Geekbench 5. And I was really impressed with the single core score of this 5600X. I figured we'd be in the 1400 range when it comes to single core, but we're at 1627. And multi-core is looking awesome at 8,298. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, here we have 3D Mark Night Raid with a 40,138. Next on the list, we have Fire Strike with a 12,584. And finally, Time Spy with a 5,687. So just judging by the benchmarks here, we should get some pretty good 1080p gaming out of this thing. So let's go ahead and jump over there now. First one on the list is Call of Duty Warzone. 1080p, high settings, I got an average of 89 FPS out of this one. Definitely playable on a machine like this, and it looks really good. Well done. The upper right part of your HUD shows how many enemies remain. Next on the list, we have GTA 5, 1080p, very high settings, and I probably should have just jacked this up to Ultra because I got an average of 132 FPS out of this one. Doom Eternal, 1080p, ultra settings, got an average of 92 FPS out of this. Really impressed with the performance out of the 1660. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, 105 FPS on average. And finally, for PC gaming, we have Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p. I did have to drop a lot of these settings down to low, so we got kind of a low-medium mix, but I gotta admit, mostly low with this one. Still, looking pretty good, and it is playable like this. As for PC gaming on this build, I think it's doing a pretty good job, but now it's time to move over to some higher end emulation. And when it comes to emulation on kind of a build like this, I like to have a nice launcher and I prefer using Big Box or LaunchBox and Big Box. If you're not familiar with LaunchBox and Big Box, basically this is an emulation front end. You can easily set it up with all of your favorite emulators and then you can import your games and it will automatically download box art and videos for you. We have a nice little interface here. There's tons of themes to choose from. The one I have here is the colorful light theme, and I got a ton of stuff on this unit. And with a build like this, it's going to handle big box with all of the effects on, no issues whatsoever. I'm going to head over to the handheld section. We're going to get started off kind of light here with the emulation testing. We'll go with PSP. We'll do one of the harder ones to emulate, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. And here it is, we're using PPSSPP, the Vulcan back in, and I was able to upscale this all the way. We can only go up to 10x resolution inside of the PPSSPP emulator. And we are maxed out here with one of the harder ones to emulate. So when it comes to PSP emulation on a machine like this, you're not going to have any issues as long as the game's compatible with the emulator. Moving up a little bit, the PS2 using PCSX2, and since I'm using that 1660 graphics card, I can use the OpenGL backend instead of DirectX 11. 
and I'm also able to upscale these games to 4K with no issues at all. tested for this video was RPCS3 for PS3, Vulcan back in, upscaled to 2K, we have Skate 3 here running at a constant 60, and even in large crowds it's going to run just fine. And if we take a look at that CPU utilization, we're at around 70 to 71%, this definitely takes advantage of those cores and extra threads, and this was the highest temperatures that I saw out of this CPU through all of my tests at 73. So yeah, definitely a great little build for PC gaming and emulation. I was really hoping that I could find an RTX 3060 for close to retail, but with GPU prices right now, it was basically impossible. And if I was able to get my hands on one, I know that we could go up to 4K with PS3 and even SimU. But I did kind of luck out finding that GTX 1660 for a little bit over retail. I really hate overpaying for these parts, but uh, I mean, in the climate we're in with these PC parts, if you want to get your hands on something right now, that's probably what you're going to have to do. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely happy with the performance out of that 5600X. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. But when it comes to a GPU, your best bet right now is to check your local listings like Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace. Sometimes you can luck out and find a decent